So we're in Barcelona for Mobile World Congress 2022. I'm here with Tammy Owen. She's the CEO of Verizon Business. Tammy, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, what are the main demands that you are getting from your enterprise customers right now? What are they looking for? Yeah, our enterprise customers are really demanding a transformation roadmap as they come back and, and reimagine how they run their businesses in a post-COVID environment. Uh, the demand for managed services, security is at the top of that list, and then of course how we think about 5G private networks and how we think about the power of edge compute. Every business is looking to take cost out, find ways to do work without humans because of the lack of just resources holistically, and then really change the customer experience that they're delivering via digitized platform. And so really interesting conversations as we move from selling circuits and widgets to really unlocking solutions and capabilities. So obviously private wireless networks, one of the hottest topics uh, in the industry right now and at the show. Uh, but before we come to that, can we talk about the importance of the 5G standalone core platform to your plans? Uh, there seems to be a lot of focus on how network slicing will drive new enterprise business revenues for, for companies like yourselves and uh, how the 5G standalone call is going to be an enabler for that. Yeah, listen, there is no question people are looking forward and saying now that you've deployed 5G and we've deployed 5G first in the world to deploy 5G mobility, fixed wireless access and edge compute on millimeter wave. And then of course in the last 30 days deployed 5G C-band or what we talk about as 5G Ultra to 100 million pops across the US. Now we're looking forward and saying, how do you think about the deployment of 5G private core? That will happen here over the next 12 to 18 months and it will open up new applications and use cases. But I don't have to wait for that to happen because I have the capability today with my 5G millimeter wave spectrum and my 5G mid-band spectrum to really unlock the capability that customers are expecting today from Verizon both on connectivity, be it public or private, as well as then platforms and applications that provide edge compute capability to transform businesses. So yes, that will come and it will provide increased applications and functionality and capability, but we're not waiting for that because the applications are real today. Okay, so uh, how is Verizon Business approaching private 5G networks in terms of that emerging market, uh, what do you have to offer that might differentiate you from the others in the market? Because I know you've already had success in the international space with this offering already. Yeah, we, we start really with the expertise that we have in RAN capability today. When I think about the scope of the network that we operate today in the US, one of the key reasons that customers come to us today is the experience and the capability we offer today in radio access network capability. Uh, so they look to an expert to deploy their private networks and then they really look to us to go from not only the deployment of that private network but really then the managed services that we offer as that private network just being one more component of how they think about network as a service. And we're really seeing B2B customers say, I need a consistent platform that gives me strong network I like the complement of a private network where I can control who has access to it, but I really want Verizon with your expertise to not only deploy that and install it, but manage it for me as I think about managed services as part of the broader portfolio of what we offer today. So obviously, you know, there's a, a lot of focus now on growing revenues from enterprise customers. That's uh, across the telcos throughout the world. Uh, how reliant is Verizon on the success of Verizon business? Um, you know, new revenue generation from private wireless networks and new applications. Is this going to be really the growth driver for Verizon in the, in the coming years? Yeah, it will be one of the growth drivers for Verizon over the coming years. We, we, I operate today a $32 billion portfolio. As we look at growth out over the next three to five years, we see three really big vectors of growth. One is continued growth in mobility. We lead the world in mobility services and capabilities. The second one is taking the platform that we've deployed in the US and deploying broadband anywhere. So we talk about it as fixed wireless access. So now I have a nationwide offering to complement that. And then the third one is this category of private networks edge compute, both public, private, and hybrid, 
And then the B2B applications and use cases that rest on that. We, we view that as a $30 billion addressable market over the five year period of time. And we expect to be able to, to gain a big component of that as we think about not only our revenue, but revenue we'll share with partners, partners that we're building this market with, partners like AWS, like Azure, like Google. We, we are the only carrier in the world with partnerships with all three of the hyperscalers. We, we know that customers want choice, and quite frankly, they want the flexibility to have multi-cloud capability in the networks they're building. Okay, interesting. Um, so uh, to change tack a little bit here, uh, what are the main challenges in being a female leader at a company operating in what is a highly male-oriented uh, industry like telecoms? And how do you overcome those challenges? Yeah, so listen, I, I think you walk around a conference like Mobile World Congress and you see very few women. Uh, and so it is being one of very few in an environment like this. Now, I would tell you at Verizon, uh, we have three female board members, which I love the fact that we have strong female representation at our board. Then you look at the two big P&L leads within Verizon Business or within Verizon Holistically. I run Verizon Business. My colleague Manone runs Consumer, so the P&L roles are held by women. So we've had strong support for gender and racial diversity, both on our board as well as within our management team. But it can be a lonely place to be. And I think I'm so committed to how do we really Really accelerate gender diversity, race diversity. I think we're moving very, very quickly from just a concept of representation to a concept of belonging. Can my voice be heard? How do I make sure my voice is equally as loud at a table with a colleague, with a group of men? But I would also tell you the big unlock here is not women talking to women. This is about bringing men into the conversation because women in leadership is not a women's issue. It is a leadership and an economic issue. And when we unlock that, we fully unlock the economic opportunity for everybody to participate. Okay. So do you expect more women to be coming into senior positions you know, across the, the whole industry? Sounds like Verizon's got a good representation already. But do you see this happening more and more in other companies I, as well? I do, and the reason I feel so confident about that, it's going to take some work for us to get there, but we see women coming out of universities, more educated in STEM, uh, more educated in many cases than male colleagues. What we have to do is create the environment where women can not only come out of university educated, but really flourish in their careers and working in STEM kinds of roles. And my expectation is we're building a surround sound where I think that will be possible. Okay, excellent. So, I mean, we're here in Barcelona, back here for the first time in a number of years. And one of the things people love to do when they come to the city is, of course, of course take in the, the food and drink. What is your tapas go-to when you come to Mobile World Congress uh, and accompanied by what drink? Well, so I would always start with the churro. So I'll start sweets first. You should accompany that with espresso, but there's plenty of good wine to have at the end of the day. Excellent. Well, that's an, an unusual way to start, but I'm sure some people will follow you and check that out, especially with the wine option as well. Tammy, thanks very much for joining us today. Great to see you. Of course. Thank you so much.